Hello and welcome, episode five, Elixir Drops. Here we go. Top five functions I think you should know when writing Elixir. Um, so why these five? Well, these functions are the most prevalent in the production app that I've been working on for over a year and it's written entirely in Elixir code. So, um, well, almost, of course, there's front end and React. Uh, so what do I think is first? First and foremost, starting at number five is uh, list.first. Now, it's pretty basic just grabs the first item of a list. You can see the example right there above as I type it out, but uh, there you have it. Um, you'll see too that some people like to be slick and cool and use the HD method or function instead. Um, but you know, these are, I've benchmarked these earlier and, and that they're actually so fast that they can't even really be measured against. And so I would advise against using the, I think it's a kernel function. I would just go straight for list first. It's more readable. It tells you exactly what you're doing and comes in very handy. Um, number two, map get. So in Elixir, of course, when you're using your maps, you can uh, use this function to get a certain uh, value out of any key. So we have a, a point to a, then we can uh, grab that value with the key. Um, map get is extremely useful. Um, and of course, if you're looking for a value that doesn't exist, you'll get back nil. Um, one thing I wasn't aware of, and we don't actually use this this much, is um, you can have default values returned. So if you look for a key that's not in your map of key value pairs, then you can return some sort of default value. Very cool. Moving on, number three, map.put. We're gonna stay with the map module again. So this guy, and again, you can always look for these documentation right in the code there with h helper function. Um, so there it is, puts the given value in the key. I think we use this over a hundred times in our app um, because we're often, you know, putting a value into params. Oh, I forgot to put a in here. So uh, we're gonna do that. And of course, params doesn't exist, so I'll have to make it. And, um, you know, one thing I would say is that this, of course, is a functional programming language, so it's not modifying the original array um, or the original map, excuse me. As you can see in other languages, sometimes Python and Ruby will modify the existing object or um, data structure that you're dealing with. So in Elixir, you would have to, you know, assign a new params to, uh, to keep everything going if you're using map.put. But very useful, very helpful function, and, um, you know, definitely used in production apps. Coming in at number four, I think very awesome helper uh, function here is the enum.find, right? And again, it has a default that uh, I don't use much. And it's funny that this, this default value is thrown in in the middle instead of at the end. Uh, so with the last two functions here, we're gonna look at using a function within. So this takes as an argument, the first argument being a, um, some sort of enumerable um, object, which in this case is a list and we use a function to then grab that object. So, uh, you know, if we want the four, then we have to write a function that says we need to find a number in here that equals four. And this can be written, uh, of course, uh, syntactic sugar. You can just say, hey, this is my function, and I want this first um, value to equal this one. And that's the same. And of course, if you're looking for something that doesn't exist, you're gonna get nil and you can have a default, which I think is so interesting. I don't use that much, but there you have it. If you want a default, you put it inside as the uh, second argument instead of the function as the second argument. Whoa, so th I think that's a little bit strange, but uh, nonetheless, you can do that with enum fine. Um, so lastly, and hopefully we have enough time to discuss, is the very involved, but very awesome enum reduce. Now this, as you can see, has tons of information about it. And there are two, and I'll talk about both versions. Um, so real quick, I've actually already got this typed up to save a little time. EnumReduce is a reducer function. It takes an argument of an enumerable. So in this case, I'm sending in a list of numbers. Then it takes a function that works off of each item in the list and the accumulator. So if an accumulator is not, um, added, it will default to the first item. So it's important to note that uh, this is not, this is taking one as the first item, and then num here is actually two. So not saying two times one is two, and then 
the next function is taking three, and it's saying three times one, is, or three times two, excuse me, is six. So uh, you can see this a little bit better if we look at a slightly different one here. Let's look at this one. So if we look at taking each number, dividing it by two, and then adding it to the accumulator, you get seven, which might seem kind of strange here, but what's happening is the first number is going to be four divided by two, and uh, it's gonna take the first item from our list as the accumulator and keep going. So that's why we get seven. If you wanted to look at every single item as you reduce over them, you'll have to start with uh, your own accumulator added in. And now you'll get more of an expected value of eight because now you're saying, okay, two plus two divided by two, four divided by two, and so on. So that's it. I went a little bit over the five minute mark, but those are my uh, top recommendations for functions, top five to know, list.first, math.get and put enum.find and reduce. Hope you liked that video. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.